Oh, Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Instagram. <laughs> Welcome to Abo. I'm Amino Hassan, and sitting to my left with a picture of Taj Gibson is the one and only Charlotte Wilder. Hello, Amin Al Hassan. Hello, Charlotte Wilder. Why Say, do you have a picture of Taj Gibson? Uh, well, because he has done for the Detroit Pistons what we were not sure anybody could do. They now have a quarter of their wins with this guy from his 10 day contract. They won two in a row. Beat the Raptors last night, and on the Dan Lebatard show, mm -hmm. we, I said I think that everybody should take that bet. Hashtag ride with Thomas. Mm -hmm. Shout out to producer Thomas. If you've been watching Oddball, you know that we've been on this for a long time. And I just think, first of all, we still Dan owes us an apology for saying that it is a bad idea to base a bet in 2024 on Taj Gibson. An international apology. An international apology, and also, I mean, they play the Heat next. Yes, they do. What do we Dan's do with that? Dan's beloved Miami Heat. What do we do with that information? <laughs> well, I think, first of all, Detroit has to do something with that information, which is... Sign Taj Gibson. To a second 10-day. There That's you go. That's right. That's the other part of that. Yep. And we start there. And if he does, then we push chips to the middle of the table. All in, baby. All, all in, in on Taj. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about Taj Gibson and the Detroit Pistons because, you know what? We can't get enough of the story that we created. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're making news. It's, it's not enough to report it. We want to be part of the news now. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're also going to talk about the most curious of streaks. Huh. Interesting. It involves a Dallas Maverick player, not the one that you think we're going to talk about. Also, bet the show. Bet the show, ladies and gentlemen. You know how it works. But we start right here in Miami where I got to see a rematch of the NBA Finals between the Denver Nuggets and the Miami Heat. And I did not put in my credential request in time, but I did watch it on television. And they kept it pretty close for a little while. It was a slugfest. It was a tough game. It was a tight game. And then at some point, the Denver Nuggets said, oh, yeah, that's right. We can score points. Yeah. And the Miami Heat realized, oh, yeah, we can't. Oh, right. That's where we've been having it. Yeah, I'm having some issues there. The Heat are now 0-11, I believe, against the best five teams in the league. Yeah, yeah. Not so how did, I mean, I feel like the Heat are a team that everyone's always like, they're terrifying to meet in the playoffs no mm -hmm. matter what, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Is this year going to be different? Well, every time everyone says, oh, no, okay, that was just a fluke, that was just a thing, and then yeah. they get to the playoffs and they do it again. So, yeah. I mean, at this point, I feel like you err on the side of the the recent history, which is they seem to show up. And because here's the thing, they do defend at an amazing clip. Again, they held the Nuggets to 100 points. Nuggets are one of the best offenses in the league. Nikola Jokic only had... I want to say 12 points last night. He was strangely quiet. I shouldn't say strangely quiet because I think Bam Adebayo did an incredible job defending him, being in denial, keeping yep. him off the glass, et cetera. They couldn't hit shots when they needed to. Yep. Denver could. And so if you're glass half full, as that glass on your table looks like, right? Glass half full says, hey, Tyler Hero didn't play. Hey, when the playoffs get here, the game gets slower. And Jimmy Butler seems to raise his game to another level, and Bam Adebayo has been playing a lot better offensively this year, we'll be fine. Glass have empty. This team is a bottom third in the NBA offense, bottom third in half-court offense, bottom third in transition buckets off of steals, right? Middle of, of the way off of rebounds. Yeah. Not only are they not good at scoring, they're not even good at getting those scoring opportunities that are easy, which is the transition ones. So all those things combine to say, yeah, I would be concerned if I'm Eric Spolstra. Yeah. But again, you know, recent history says they usually figure it out when they get to the playoffs. At one point last night, I could hear on television, Jaime Hawkes took a three. He was like one for seven yeah. or something at the point at this point in the game. And and he missed. And I just heard the crowd the audible groan. groan. Which is usually reserved for Madison Square Madison Garden. Madison Square Garden is usually the groaners. But, but yeah. yeah, I also, I am upset that I wasn't at the game because my favorite in-game entertainment uh, happened and I wasn't there to see it. And they had a new bit this time? The Golden Oldies. That's right. Charlotte is obsessed. They have a, a team of elderly people come out and they do a dance routine. They're like 
a full on dance routine, and usually they mix it up. And they they always start like, oh, we're kind of old, and oh, and then the music switches, and then all of a sudden they're doing all these modern dances and stuff. For the Heat, it's called the Golden Oldies, and last night they came out with like a country theme. I can't believe I miss it. I miss the Golden Oldies and a country theme. I love country music. Do I don't know. Yeah, I do. I don't know why. I did not know that. Yeah, uh, I contain multitudes. But, I mean, I have, every time I've been to a game and I've walked by the Golden Oldies in the... Which is every time you go to a game, by the way. They're always they're performing always, the nights at Charlotte's there. Yes, exactly. It's like some bat signal. And they're always hanging out practicing in the, in the corridors around the arena. And I say hi to them. And I feel like I'm, I'm starstruck. They're yeah. like, oh, hey. And I'm like, you do an amazing job. Because I don't think people understand. They do an unbelievable job. Like, these people can actually dance, and I just think, also, I do watch League Pass sometimes largely just for these interstitials. Like, Jazz Bear has been insane recently. So this is my favorite part about last night. I'm at the game. I tell Charlotte, oh, by the way, your folks are here. They're about to go They're going to go dance. She got so excited, and then a little bit later, she complains to me, like, oh, this game's not on League Pass. And I said, yeah, Charlotte's on ESPN. You can just turn on your hotel TV and watch it on ESPN. And she says, no, I need League Pass so I can watch the timeouts, so I can watch the Golden Oldies. I was like, I have the game on. <laughs> I'm not, I don't need to see the game. I mean, speaking of games, are you playing in a celebrity basketball I am. game on Saturday? I am playing on a celebrity basketball game on Saturday in Dallas oh my for God. Athletes Unlimited. This is a women's professional league. Mm -hmm. They actually have for different sports, but obviously this is the basketball one I'm yeah. going to be helping out with. And they asked me to do it, and I said, you know what, why not? Yeah. And instantly regretted it oh. because I am terrified of getting hurt. Terrified of getting hurt. I've, I, I've even requested to get subbed out as quickly as possible and never put me back in the game because I just don't want to get hurt. Are they going to do that for you? I don't know. Well, the good news is I know who's coach. one of the coaches who's coaching who's me. Who's coaching you? Are uh, you allowed to say? Count on Vic. Shout out to at Count on Vic, Victoria. Uh, one of my good friends. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to tell her, like, Vic, your boy cannot go too much longer than uh, maybe a couple of seconds here. Yeah, as someone who also has back problems, I'm, like, scared well, for it. Know, that was, like, you know what this version for me is? When Dan was, like, go run, run. with oh. the helmet on. And I was, like. <sighs> yeah, that was that was a brave decision because the parking lot out there is not it's not smooth pavement. No, it's it got all the nooks and crannies and cracks and it stuff. Didn't feel good, but yeah. anything. For and then they asked you to do it again. That's my favorite part. Like, oh, we didn't get it the yeah, first I time. Yeah, I was like, God damn it. So in preparation for this, and this is a great oddball sidetrack here, I played in a half court pickup game for the first time in a very long time. Okay. And like. A little stuff started coming back to me. I was like, you know what, man? The shot wasn't there, but <laughs> I had some good passes. I had some good screens and stuff like that. Like Muscle I, memory. You know where to be on I the court. I know where to be on the court. I know how to interact and interplay with people. So I think, you know, I think basketball-wise, I'm going to be fine. But a part, just, no, so a part of you is like, I want to go out there and just ball out. Not ball out. I just want to feel that fun again because I miss it. I miss yeah. playing ball. So. Yeah. All right, well, stay tuned, folks. Uh, coming next week. Yeah, in, I'll tell in, you. In, in, in full body cast. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like the right, Hugh Freeze in the hospital bed. So, Charlotte, yeah. we didn't talk about this yesterday, but Kawhi Leonard the other night against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah. Back spasms happen. He's got to lead the game early. Anthony Edwards goes crazy. He's basically saying, yeah, once Kawhi was out, like I, I knew I could get whatever I wanted. And now we know that he didn't make the flight uh, for the trip because, as we know, planes plus back spasms don't get along. Very, very bad. So is this wear and tear or is this like, oh, because like part of me is like, you know what? It happens if you've got. If yeah. You, you, it happens. He's been playing so much. Yeah, He's been playing a lot. He's been healthy all year long. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it is fatigue and you just need some time to rest that back or whatever. No big deal. We're still, what is this? It's a strong month before the playoffs start. Yeah. Right? So he should be fine. But there's another part because it is the Clippers and it is Kawhi Leonard where yeah. it's like, oh, here we go. Here it starts all over again. I so badly want it to be the former. I yeah. so badly want it to be the former. And I think that this year there's actually a better chance of that being the case than in years past because yeah. he has been healthy. He's been working so much in in a way that like it hasn't been stop and start it hasn't been little tweaks here and there like this is the first that we've heard of mm -hmm. as something big enough for him not to be on that plane 
I it's hard though a player of Kawhi's age with his injury history not to not to start thinking oh god is this the is, is this where it starts Every to time. fall apart for the Clippers? Like anytime anything happens, yeah. if the guy sneezes, I'm like, are you I okay? Know. Sure, I know. Fine. You want to like put him in bumble wrap? Yeah, bumble wrap. Bumble. Bumble wrap is. Bumble wrap. That's the dating app I'm on. It's a wrap. <laughs> um, we're gonna talk about. Uh, let's start in New York City. We start with uh, OG Ananobi. Mm -hmm. We talked about him yesterday coming back, leading the team uh, to a plus twenty eight and a plus minus. Had 14 points, but it was very clear they're a much better team when he's out there. Yeah. And Charlotte yes. OG was happy he got the surgery. I know, which that is rhymed. Which, which is awesome. You all, I I think that a lot of times getting the surgery can feel so much scarier to mm -hmm. fans and to players in terms of like, okay, well you know exactly what you're in for in terms of a recovery. If you keep playing, it's like, well maybe I can just rest it. And it won't be that bad. I think he was in a lot more pain. Than he let on, yeah. absolutely. He, this is his quote. It's a lot better than it was in the month of January, by the way. And that's when they went 12-2 and yeah. two <laughs> with him in the, uh, in the lineup. I'm happy. Should get better and better. They are now 13-2 and two in the 15 games he's played with uh, his plus-minus at plus 18.7 per game. That's crazy. Crazy. That is insane. That is an insane plus minus. He also said, I thought I was going to come in and make an impact. Didn't really think about it. As the games go on, everything will start feeling better. Also, I definitely don't feel the way I felt before I got injured conditioning-wise. But I'm sure it'll come back next game. It also, comes back fast. I really appreciate that honesty, too. Yep. Cause it, and that's exactly what we've been saying all season about teams that obscure what injuries are. Yep. Like, especially with Joel. Teams that don't give you the full information. Like, OG came out and he said, here's what happened. They'd been very upfront from the beginning. And then he says, my conditioning isn't where it needs to be. It will get there. And that removes anybody being like, oh, but what about his conditioning? It right. just like nips it in the bud. It, it does away with that storyline before anybody can run with it. I do want to point out that he had a scope. So it's the kind of uh, surgery that theoretically is pretty simple, straightforward. And the recovery is pretty quick, as we saw. Whereas Julius Randle, who is weighing... Not weighing. He's trying to go the non-surgical route. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because surgery would eliminate him for an extended amount of time, definitely right. for the rest of the season. So right. there is there is an element of like, yes, he. If you're lucky enough. Yes, to be he able had the to luxury to have a surgery that would allow him to be back. Totally. All right. Uh, other good news: Donovan Mitchell came back last night, turned after a seven-game absence. Remember, he had the PRP blood spinning vampire thing yeah, going he on. Got his own blood, like. Yep. Into his and they body. just shove it yeah. right back into him. <laughs> yep. And uh, the Cavs beat the Pelicans 116 to 95. Mitchell scored 14 points. Darius Garland 27 and 11. And the Cavs combined for 23 pointers. Donovan Mitchell said afterward, "That's how we're supposed to play. Move the ball around, getting stops. It was just fun to watch and be a part of. We really stepped up against a great team." He added, "It was beautiful." Also, the Cavs are second in the. Yes. The Cavs are second in the East, and they did that without Donovan Mitchell for the past seven years. Yes. That's terrifying. Yeah, and, and no Evan Mobley, and no Max Struess. Look, look like, what? I, I had this conversation on NBA radio the other day about, like, who's coach of the year, and J.B. Bickerstaff was two for me. Yeah. Because not only have they been excellent, but they've been excellent against adversity. Adversity meaning you're missing three starters. They were missing three starters at one point. And they've managed to keep this thing going. I also think that uh, they don't get nearly enough recognition individually. So, for instance, Charlotte Wilder. Yes. If I told you that Jared Allen had one all-league selection, what would you think it was? Uh... Just gut reaction. I said, he's had one time he's been named to an all-blank team. Defense? One would think it would be all defense. The guy's a great right. defensive player. No. He's been an all-star. But he hasn't been an all-defensive team selection. Really? Which is kind of preposterous when you think about it. This guy is an elite, elite, elite defensive center in the league. And the reason why the Cavs are such a stalwart defense uh, year in and year out, basically since he and J.B. Yeah. Bickers have been there. And let me, let me ask you a question. Yep. Do you think that this is Cleveland bias? Like, do you think because Cleveland is not a sexy, flashy team, people – don't look at guys like Jared Allen, who is not like the flashiest name, and he gets overlooked. Yeah, I think I think I don't know if it's a Cleveland bias. I know Jared is a 
soft spoken guy. He's not really bravado, yeah. beating my chest, uh, look at my resume. He's not branding guy. himself. He's not branding himself. But he's, I mean, uh, to me, the, the the idea that he would not be on one of those teams ever in his career, yeah. that's kind of wild because one of those things is going to happen where this, his career is going to end one day and then years are going to pass and people are going to talk about how, who's, who are some of the great defensive players of this era where nobody played defense. Right. And his, his someone's going to say, Jared Allen was a great defensive player, and some kid is going to go on Basketball Reference and be like, this dude was never on the all-defensive team. He was never a defensive player of the year. How can you say he was a great defender when, in reality, like yeah. he was doing the damn thing? And he's been in the league since 2017. Yeah, so he's not a young, a young guy. He's, Even though he's only 25. He's not a spring chicken, which oh, is always such a friend. weird, weird statement. All right. Okay. Tyrese Maxey, another guy came back from injury, came back that same game that OG came back, unfortunately. Didn't work didn't out. Didn't work out quite as well. But uh, Maxey was out with a concussion, if I'm correct, so... You know, it's such a weird thing for us in basketball. We don't talk about concussions that much. I know. So I'm like, you're fine. You're fine. Right, you're you know, good. I'm like where football was like 15 years ago. Like, <laughs> hey, he's got his bell rung. <laughs> we just need a Will Smith movie. Uh, no, Tell I, the truth. <laughs> um, the concussion thing, it's also much more subjective. It's not like you come back and is your elbow. Yeah. Like, how much does your elbow hurt? It's yeah. like the, the symptoms are so varied. It's like, how dizzy are you? Yep. So I can imagine that, I mean, also conditioning-wise, it takes a second to, mm-hmm. to ramp up. I'm just glad Tyrese is back. Maxie is so delightful. He had seven, 17 points in his return, so that's not quite the Tyrese Maxie that we're used to, yeah, but I'm but sure he'll get back to it. And If the Maxie we're not used to is still 17 points, that's pretty good. It's pretty good if Joel Embiid were playing, but he's right. not. So okay. it's not it's not quite good enough, Charlotte. Not quite good enough. Okay, sorry. All right. Let's take a break here. Okay. When we come back. A very, very interesting streak involving a Dallas Mavericks player. You don't want to miss this. All right, Charlotte Wilder, the Dallas Mavericks have a couple of streaks that were going that have been very impressive. One has been broken. One is still going. So the one that everyone knows about is Luka Doncic had seven straight games with a triple-double. That was the second longest in NBA history. Longest was Russell Westbrook with 11, and then he was tied with Wilt Chamberlain with seven, right? But he did have the record for most consecutive triple doubles with 30 points, which is six games in a row, and 35 points, which is five games in a row. That's preposterous. Preposterous. <laughs> and yet there's one that's even more preposterous that's still going right now. What is it? It's Daniel Gafford. The newly acquired Daniel Gafford used to play for the Washington Wizards, now plays with Dallas Mavericks. But Daniel Gafford is just three field goals away from the all-time record for most consecutive field goals made. The record is 35 in a row. Gafford has made 33 field goals in a row oh over, over the last five games. The pressure that comes with these next two shots. He's going to be like. Oh, I can't even. Oh, my God. I, I have a dunk, stomach ache. Dunk the shit out yeah. of it, Danny Gafford. You, <laughs> Put you, it into the no basket. No layups. <laughs> no. no jump hooks. No, no jump hooks. Definitely not you a three. Have to go God forbid. There and like Aaron Gordon last night, grab the <laughs> rim and slap the backboard on the way down. <gasps> so, wait, who has a record? The record is Wilt Chamberlain. Oh, so this is right. one of those, like, what I call the hallowed records. Like, when you when you break a Wilt Chamberlain record, you're doing some shit. That ain't yeah. no regular, everyday uh, occurrence. But 33 field goals made in a row over the last five games. He's three field goals away from owning that record. The Mavs have won four in a row, and they go to Oklahoma City to play the second game of a back-to-back tonight. So, so this could happen. Little legs. It could, it could happen. Do we know tonight. how many games he's done this across? Five games. Five games? It's over five games. Okay. Now, Luca left the last game with 646 remaining after he, uh, I believe it was a hamstring tweak, yeah, yeah. right? So it's a back-to-back. He tweaked his hamstring last night. There is a chance that Luca Doncic does not play. If you're Daniel Gafford, do you also conveniently tweak your hamstring? Oh, yeah. Coach, I can't, I can't go tonight. <laughs> my... Luca, how you feel? <laughs> I, uh, no, no, no. Luca's yeah, out. No, out. if Luca's out, yeah. I mean, it has nothing to do with him, but also, I want to be spoon-fed lob pass. That's honestly, if I'm Jason Kitt, and I know this goes against all competition, or whatever. <laughs> we're drawing up just lob passes for Gafford, like just lobs, because once you're up there, you know immediately either I'm going to finish this or I can't finish it. I got to come back down. Right. If you come back down, Gaff, don't worry. Just like either kick it back out or pump fake and jump and then draw the foul. Because then that's a freebie there. Right. Like, you get fouled and you throw it up. If it goes in, boom, you got a field goal make. If you miss, you drew the foul. It's all good. That field goal attempt doesn't count. 
That's the only way to go about this if you're Daniel Gafford. Yeah. Listen, Jason Kidd, do the right thing. Daniel Gafford, do the right thing. Daniel Gafford, do the right thing. All right. It is time for Bet the Show. Bet the Show is sponsored by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Hell yeah. Before we get into today's bets, which I am going to be taking, uh, last Thursday's bet, hashtag Ride with Thomas, where the whole Taj Gibson thing started. If you did that, you won money. Uh, so the bet was that Thomas would have to stand outside of Barclays holding a sign that says, I'm sorry, Brooklyn, but now he doesn't have to do that. So we're going to have to come up with another bet in the future where Thomas has to hold up a sign somewhere because I would like that visual. Um, also, now he gets to watch the last game of the season with me. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to watch it, too. The last Pistons game. I think we're going to – it should be an oddball watch along. Yeah, we should be. You know what? Book it. Book it. Also, we got a retweet from Taj Gibson. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That huh? was really cool. Yeah. I don't know if he watched the clip. Because in he it, I'm saying He watches the hash- show. Watch the clip. He watches the show. He's got DraftKings Network locked in, as should you. He sure does. On your Roku or your Samsung device? Uh, I mean, can you read the bets to me this week? Sure thing, Charlotte Wilder. Thank you. Bet number one, the Suns and Celtics played last Saturday in Phoenix, and the Celtics won 117 to 107. Mm-hmm. They face off again tonight in Boston, Charlotte. Durant and Tatum will both score over 30 points. So, as a recap, last Saturday, Durant scored 45, and Tatum had 29. In their last five games, Durant has averaged 34.4 points, Tatum has averaged 26.8. Okay. So, the wager is are you willing to act? Like you're fully in on the Miami Heat making a run in the playoffs again on the main show, on the Dan Lebetard show. If you win, hey, you do you, and you do it well, if we might add. If you lose, you have to Thank act you. your ass off and borderline derail the main show, rhapsodizing about why the Heat are legit the team. So much so that you make Dan, Mike Ryan, Jeremy Taché, Parakeet Cortez, and all the other Heat homers tell you to cool it. So here's a question. Why, excuse my French, the f- would I do that? There's a second bet that you could take. Okay, well, tell me what that the one The second is. bet is down to hashtag ride with Thomas and hashtag rising Taj again this weekend. The Pistons play the Heat in Detroit Friday and Sunday, and the Pistons will win at least one of the games. So that's the bet. And are you willing to talk about the Utah Jazz positively for a whole second? No, it should be the Miami Heat again. It should be the Miami Heat again. No, I'm changing this. Are you willing to talk about the Miami Heat positively for a whole segment? If you win, you can continue to ignore the Heat, and Thomas will be okay with it because he's wonderful for giving like that. If you lose, (laughs) study up on the Magic City's finest. Okay, okay. First of all, uh, I have to ride with Taj. I have to ride with Taj. I have to ride with Taj, and I have to ride with Thomas. I'll do a segment on the Heat here talking about them positively. There is no way I'm going going all in on main show as a Heat. You could. What if? What if? All right. So, producer Matt, let me ask you this, Hollywood. What if she does it here, but I get to pick a special guest to come along to hear you rhapsodize about the Heat? I won't reveal who it is. But I'll bring in a special guest, and you have to basically. And they I know have, who it's going to be. They have to. Approve. I know who it's going to be. You don't know who it's going to be. I know what you're doing. I have so many. I could be Eric Spolstra. I know Coach Spo. I, I might. Maybe I'll. That's the. Yeah. Hey, Coach Spo. Okay. Don't want to interview you. Don't want to ask any questions. I just want you to sit here and listen to Charlotte tell you how wonderful your team is, and then you tell me whether you believe it's sincere or not. I don't think I've ever been more nervous for a bet on this show in my life, but well, I'm going to take it. One of these teams is your team, the Celtics, and the other is, you know, a, I know, but a, a I really need the Pistons to win, which is like the least safe bet yeah. you could ever make. It's just funny, yeah. Like you're taking the riskier bet, but it, it is. It, it's a riskier bet, but, but the, it pay, is, it, the payoff is is it, tremendous. Okay, all right, I'm doing it. I'm going to ride with Thomas. I'm going to take the Pistons over the Heat in at least one game this weekend. I mean. To be fair, the Heat have played poorly as of late. They've lost four games in a row. We've detailed their problems offensively with Tyler Hero out. The And the Pistons have been playing better lately, so it's not that far-fetched. Also, sign Taj to another 10-day. Troy Weaver, do what is right. Do what's right. Do the right thing. Um, James Wiseman said, quote, He, Taj, has given me a lot of confidence, always speaking to me, always telling me, just play my game. 
you need that. You need that veteran guy. You need the guy who's making the young guys feel like, I got this, and now they're winning, so just do it. Sign him. It's going to be funny when this episode airs and they say, the Pistons declined to extend Todd Gibson a second 10-day contract. I have Todd's like eating like a donut. Yeah, he's like, just play, just your, play game. your game. <laughs> <laughs>